So it says that uh, the sea cucumbers, so what you need to know over here is that the sea cucumbers, now what are the sea cucumbers holding? So they are the prohibited species. And these prohibited species are as per Schedule 1 and Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. Transactions of turmeric and other commodities across the international maritime boundary line is an offense under the Custom Act 1962, the release added. So, what are the central and state agencies doing? So, central and state agencies, including the Food Branch and the Marine Police, questioned the Sri Lankan nationals and officials. Said. A senior official said the accused person, uh, this, 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 and these people. Uh, were handed over the Marine Police. Now, the Marine Police booked the Sri Lankan nationals under the Indian Passport Act, among others, and produced uh, them before a court in Ramishwar. The apprehended fishermen from uh, this district are the respective people. So, first, why this news becomes important for you is that you need to cover the species and you should know the geography behind the in the regions of the Gulf. Fine. What else?
Okay. The next one is center to introduce DNA phase matching systems at police station across the country. Now, what is uh, the DNA phase matching system and what is the need for it? So, it will be implemented under the Criminal Procedure Identification Act, which was passed last year. The law enables police and central investigating agencies to collect, store, analyze physical and biological samples, including the retina and ear scan of the arrested person. Now, more than a year after the Criminal Procedure Identification Act was passed by the Parliament, the Centre is all set to roll out what? DNA and face matching systems at 1300 police stations. The provisions of the Act are yet to be implemented entirely on the grounds. There are logistics and connectivity issues too. The law enables the police and the central investigating agencies to collect, store and analyze physical and biological samples including retina and ear scan of arrested persons. Now, the law was passed in the parliament in April 22 and the rules were notified in the September. Now, the National Crime Records Bureau, NCRB, a central organization tasked with rolling out the act was assigned the task of finalizing the standard operating procedures to be followed by the police officials. Now, what else they have said? Though the act and the rules do not explicitly mentioned the collection of DNA samples and face matching procedure, the NCRB meeting with state police official informed them that the said measures would be rolled out in around 1300 locations spread across police districts, commissionerates and special investigation units at uh, state headquarters. Now the Union Home Ministry has constituted a domain committee for a successful implementation of the act with the representatives from the state police central law enforcement agencies and other key stakeholders. A technical subcommittee for preparing the SOPs, that is your standard operating procedures, for capturing the DNA as a measurement have also uh, been constituted. The states have been uh, asked to identify the locations and prepare the sites where the measurement collection unit may be established as suggested by the NCR. Uh, the central body under the Home Ministry will be repository of the database at the national level. Now, what has the Delhi Police said? Now, they are recording measurements such as palm, finger impression, uh, photographs of accused person according to the old format. And we're also using the National Automated Fingerprint Identification System. So, what is your uh, national automated identification system. So under this um, National Automated Fingerprint Identification System, what will happen? The records of the thumb, finger impression, photographs of the accused person uh, were be used. So what are the data that is being used? That is the thumbprint. The fingerprints, photographs. of the accused person to be used. Okay, so under this NAFIS, another project maintained and managed by NCRB, uh, workstation scanners have been put up at around 1300 police stations. It has fingerprint detail, a unique 10 digit number more than one crore people accused and convicts across the country. So they are having what? Uh, 10 digits. Unique 
number and this 10 digit unique number is for what? This 10 digit unique number is about the identification of the criminals being accused um, Uh, this database is also being integrated with the Criminal Procedure Identification Act. So the data of NAFIS, uh, FIC is operating in integration with Criminal Procedure Identification. Further moving, the Act replaced the 100-year-old Identification of Prisoners Act 1920, whose scope was limited to capturing finger impressions, footprints, and photographs of the convicted prisoners. So the Act is uh, replacing the 100-year-old Identification of uh, Prisoners Act 1920. That means the Act is replacing. of business act. Identification of prisoners act. And this identification of prisoners act nineteen twenty was so this was your 100 year old act and uh, what was uh, the act talking about that means uh, capturing fingerprint session footprints and photographs fingerprints footprints photographs Now, what else? And a specific category of arrested and non convicted person under the orders of the magistrate. So, an official said that the NCRB has cautioned against the misuse of databases by ensuring identification and deployment of appropriate safeguards, adding that only designated officials must have access in real time. So the access to this data, that means uh, the, all this identification, etc. will be with the designated officials. Police official from northeastern states said training and resources were the key thing problems. The police are often short on funds. Uh, though the Home Ministry will bear the cost of hardware and others, and the cost of a secure internet line and other operating costs will have to be borne by the state. That means uh, the police are uh, already short of funds. So though the Home Ministry will bear the cost for the hardware, that means uh, the issue of fund is coming and the police is already short of funds. So who will be bearing the cost? So the cost of all the hardware devices and this cost will be borne by our Ministry of Home Affairs. Um, 
ministry where the cost of hardware and then the cost of secure internet line and other operating costs will have to be borne by the state. So hardware devices will be borne by the Ministry of Home Affairs and operating lines cost will be borne by the state. NCRB has said that the tools and systems used by the police should be technologically, legally, and forensically sound and accredited. When the act was introduced in the parliament in March 2022, the opposition opposed the bill, terming, terming it unconstitutional and an attack on privacy. So uh, now here the question lies that uh, the act that is going to come will be a uh, breach to privacy or because uh, your DNA, your you know, face recognition system, that is your e-list recognition, etc., will all be captured and will be there uh, under uh, the government. So the state will become almost very powerful. So will it be a breach to privacy? The question arises. And if it is, it is, then the bill is unconstitutional. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the next tool uh, that is coming on your uh, screen is four labels to have QR code to help the visually disabled. So what is happening is FSS AI says a quick response codes should have comprehensive details about the product, including of ingredients, nutritional content, and allergens. Says who will ensure access to safe food for all. Uh, the Food Safety Standard Authority of India has recommended the use of quick response codes on food products for accessibility by persons with visual disabilities, stating that this would ensure access to safe food for all including those with special needs. In a recent advisory signed by the Director, the Director of Science and Standard Divisions, the FSSAI said that ensuring inclusive access to information was a fundamental right of citizen. So what is what, what, is, what are the directors saying? That uh, access to information, or you can say what? Access to information is fundamental right and fundamental right of what? Fundamental right of It is imperative that food products are labeled in a manner that ensures accessibility to all consumers, including those with visual impairment. impairment. The FSSAI under uh, its food safety and standards and what is the act that is labeling and disabled regulations 2020 has comprehensively outlined the information to be included on the labels of the food product. This includes product name, shelf life, nutrition facts, vegetarian, non-vegetarian logos, ingredients list, allergen warnings, and other product specific labeling requirements. So uh, what is uh, the act talking about? That is your uh, FSSI, AI, labeling and display. Yeah. 
plating and display regulations 2020. What kind of information need to be captured there? So say they said that this should include the product name. It should include the shelf life. It shall include the nutritional facts. That means the product is carrying uh, you know, for what kind of ingredients, whether they are nutritional or not, nutritional facts. Uh, next is your vegetarian and non-vegetarian logo. Next is your uh, ingredients list. And next is your allergen points. So allergen warnings and other product specific relating points. So the information is aimed and you know uh, uh, like Providing this information is of what good to those visually impaired. Like, what is what uh, you know, what purpose that is going to serve? The thing was this. So, let's do the aim of it. So, the aim of this is that it would empower the consumers to make informed choices when selecting food products. So the rights of persons with disability at 2016 recognizes the right and needs of the individuals with disability which emphasizes accessibility and promotion of health for persons with disabilities. Now this uh, act, that is your rights of persons with disabilities act 2016, it, uh, recognizes the rights and needs of the individuals with disabilities which emphasizes accessibility and promotion of health for persons with disabilities. The FSSAI said that to enhance accessibility Food business uh, operators were encouraged to incorporate provisions that facilitate uh, easy access to nutritional information for visually impaired individuals. One effective means to achieve this by incorporating is QR codes on product labels. The QR codes should encompass comprehensive details about the product, including but not limited to ingredients, nutritional information, allergens, manufacturing date, best before that is your expiry date, allergen warnings, and contact information for customer inquiries. It added that the inclusion of QR code for the accessibility of information did not replace or negotiate the requirement to provide mandatory information on the product label as prescribed by prevalent uh, regulations okay now moving on to the next article
minutes. So if you see um, here, now this picture is talking about a sprawling temporary lake and bad water basin, salt flats caused by flooding in August from tropical storm Larry at the recent reopened Death Valley National Park in California. So there is your death. The storm delivered a year's worth of uh, rain to the valley, which is the hottest place on the earth. Now, the, the storm that was there uh, in the hottest valley on the earth in a single day. Bad water basin itself is located 282 feet below the sea level. Now, the point is, what is a bad water basin? So, here and covering your bad water basin. So the point is what is your bad water basin? As it is talking about the bad water basin. So a bad water uh, basin is a kind of a endorphic basin. And this basin is present where? In the Death Valley National Park. And uh, this is where uh, Death Valley is located in the region of Indo County. And this Indo County is where? In the regions of California. And this Death Valley uh, is the lowest point. America. And what is, uh, when I'm saying it's the lowest point, what? Your death valley. So what is that lowest point? So that lowest point is some 282 feet. And you can say that is near about close to 86 meter below the sea level. Now, the next one is that if this is the lowest point, then which is the you know, highest point? So, Mount Whitney, this is your highest point in continuous United States. Next is what is Death Valley? So Death Valley is a kind of desert valley. And this desert valley is present where? In the eastern California region. And uh, in California region, more precisely, it is in the Mojave Desert. So this becomes important with respect to your uh, uh, geography aspect. So Mojave Desert. Now, uh, this Death Valley is considered to be the hardest place on Earth. And uh, this death valley is home to Indisha tribe. Now, when I 
come to the point that uh, this is a bad water basin and I have told you the highest and the lowest point. Uh, now the point is that is there any other, uh, you know, this death valley present? So there is one Bonus Creek. This is also having, uh, you know, this is a point and the temperature of this region is between 6.7 degrees Celsius. And this is one of the highest temperature recorded ever on. Now, this was with respect to your death value. Let's move on to the detailed analysis. Bhutan and China make progress in border talks. So Bhutan and China held their 25th round of boundary talks of Ukraine, which has been held up since the previous round in 2016, even as uh, Bhutan's foreign minister met with Chinese foreign minister. So significantly, this was the first official visit to China by the Bhutanese foreign minister. The boundary talks were led by uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the External Trade of Bhutan. Uh, Vice Foreign Minister of China signed a, a cooperation agreement. And what is this cooperation agreement? This cooperation agreement outlining the functioning of a joint technical team. And uh, with respect to what? On the delimitation and demarcation of the Bhutan China border. So the talks are between what? Delimitation and demarcation of Bhutan China boundary, which has been agreed in August, a joint press release issued in Beijing. So, what is the statement by the Chinese foreign minister? Now, the Chinese foreign minister has expressed the hope that the two countries would establish diplomatic relations, something Bhutan has said, uh, held out on this far as it does not have ties with any UN SC prominent members of the five countries. Now, the conclusion of the boundary negotiations and the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Bhutan fully serve the long term and fundamental interest of the country and nation of Bhutan. Now, what else? Now, well, in page number 10, uh, Bhutan and China make process, uh, progress in border talks. So while India has said in the past it uh, very closely follows the talk as it pertains to its security, especially near the dry junction point near Dogla, the Ministry of External Affairs did not comment on the Bhutan foreign minister's visit to China. The Bhutanese uh, minister Minister of Foreign Affairs has not issued any separate statement on the meeting, but according to the Chinese uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs statement, uh, it has concurred with on the boundary issues. Now, what is uh, they are saying? Now, Bhutanese Prime Minister has disclosed that the two countries, that means Bhutan and China, 
were inching towards the completion of a three step road map on boundary deviation that includes agreeing to the demarcation of the border in talks on the table so this visiting the sites along the demarcated lines on the ground before finally and formally demarcating the boundary between them we hope to see a line being drawn this side bhutan and that side china so this is what uh, the ministers of uh, china and bhutan have said now when asked about uh, bhutan's position on operating or opening of diplomatic ties with china so what they have been saying is theoretically how can bhutan not have any bilateral relations with china the question is when and in what manner uh the chinese vice president and the official media quoted saying that china was willing to strengthen exchange at all needs and in all fields from the trade culture tourism adding that both sides are firm determination and a sincere desire to demarcate their boundaries and establish diplomatic relations now bhutan and china has held 24 rounds of boundary talks between 1984 and 2016 so a dozen rounds of expo group meetings that yielded the three step road map and earlier this year held what their first boundary delimitation talks by a joint technical team indicating they are serious about an early conclusion of the progress a process now what have the experts in india said about this deal between uh, the china and the bhutan uh, they say to swap a uh, arrangement between areas to the north that is your uh, jhampalang and paskulang valleys with doklam to the west would be of concern to india given the proximity to india's narrow siliguri corridor that connects the north eastern state to the rest of india see what is happening is there was uh, this india bhutan uh, friendship treaty so under the treaty bhutan agreed to be guided by india in its foreign uh, relations and india agreed not to interfere in bhutan's internal affairs so what was that treaty that treaty was uh, with respect to india bhutan so let me tell you there was 1949 we had india bhutan friendship treaty so under this friendship treaty what was there uh, it was said that uh, you know bhutan agreed to be guided by india in its foreign relations so whatever foreign relations bhutan is carrying that would be guided india would be guiding bhutan and in return what else was happening that india will not interfere in bhutan's internal affairs by uh, now apart from this uh, there was a obligation obligation uh, of india on bhutan forward defend bhutan against any external threats Uh, apart from this now what happened was that uh, you know india and bhutan mutually agreed agreed to update the 1949 treaty with uh, the 2007 uh, india bhutan friendship treaty so what was that treaty that explicitly recognized bhutan's sovereignty and what was that sovereignty that it would no longer formally require what bhutan to be guided by india so no longer in its foreign policy now out of consideration what happened was that uh, you know india and this bhutan has not set up any official uh, diplomatic ties with the p5 countries now because uh, of this uh, and what are those like all those p5 countries because uh, india was to guide bhutan with uh, in the affairs of international relations so 
inside country is absolutely uh, no diplomatic ties Now, when uh, this uh, you know meeting was held, what was uh, you know the expert groups meeting that was held in Beijing, uh, you know, uh, in August twenty twenty three? So the important outcome of uh, this uh, setup, that is, the expert group meeting, EGM, and this expert group meeting was held where in Beijing, that is, in China. So, what was the outcome of this meet? The outcome of this meet was to set up a joint technical team, and this joint technical team was with respect to what? Now, this joint technical team is uh, going to talk about what? The limitation of And based on this delimitation, where you know uh, the delimitation, uh, delimitation of China Bhutan boundary, now this was uh, held its first meeting along the you know sidelines of what? Uh, so all the terms, clauses, or you can say sidelines were based on expert group meeting. So when this meeting was held, now what was uh, you know the outcome, or you can say what were they, what what have they talked about? So the two sides here, China and Bhutan. They said that there will be what a possible. Communication with respect to what holding the twenty fifth round of China Sudan boundary talks. Right. 
Crossing a line, the government should desist from the politicizing the bureaucracy. The center has asked all the departments to deploy officers to showcase its achievement across the country, down to the village level, through a road show titled Vixit Bharat Sankal Yatra. So, the uh, name is your. Vixit. Uh, to be sure, the outreach is only about achievement of the last nine years that corresponds to the two terms of uh, the present day government. The campaign is conveniently timed for uh, the elections and uh, what is uh, they talking about? So, trading the Ministry of Defense is setting up 822 selfie points where citizens can take themselves to the picture and uh, guidelines issued by the ministry go into greater detail on how to promote the work of the last nine years. Now, uh, it has been directed that these points should be set up at prominent locations which have maximum footfall and the potential of attracting public attention. Boarding memorials, defense museums, railways, metro stations, bus stations, airports, malls, and marketplaces, schools and colleges, school destinations, festival gatherings are places where these points are coming up. Now, uh, the opposition has called out the government for what? Politicization of bureaucracy. Now, this becomes very important with respect to the GS Paper 2 and also GS Paper 4 with respect to your exemption. India's constitutional scheme of governance envisage the separation of power among the three arms of the state, that means executive, judiciary, legislature, and also a line of separation between the bureaucracy and the military from the political executive. While both the bureaucracy and the military are strictly under the control of political executive, they are insulated from the partisan politics. In fact, the extensive election process in India has largely detained its credibility because of the bureaucratic impartiality demanded by the system. The military's involvement in any kind of domestic politics is considered as anthemia. Civil and the military officials are expected to remain loyal to the government elected by the civilians. Now, regardless of their personal ideological inclination, Instinct directives force them into partisan roles in furtherance of the interest of the ruling party. The BJP's strategy of disregarding norms in pursuit of electoral gains has been successful. But the trail of uh, damage it leaves behind will fester. So if the institutions are undermined, the damage may well be irreversible. It is the time the ruling party kept the interest of nations before self and practice what it teaches. So, if you see, the whole article is about what? The Vixit Bharat Sankal Yatra. Now, this Yatra is uh, doing what? Now, it talks about the campaigning. Campaigning regarding what? 
the work that has been done at Village. Fine. And uh, this campaign is promoting achievement, which uh, is okay, which is no way wrong. But the point is that in the process, the, what is happening is politicization of politicization of bureaucracy. Right? So, uh, this is what the author is saying that you need to keep uh, your personal things, uh, you know, your interest personal to yourself and uh, nation is going to come uh, first. So, nation call should be nation Okay, uh, since I have less of time, uh, and this article becomes important with respect to India and Canada bonding that is in danger of snapping. And uh, one more article becomes important is mitigating tragedies in the Himalayan region. Now, the recent glacial lake outburst for flood in Sikkim week walk, uh, along the Vista River, bringing into focus magnifying risk of climate change induced uh, glacial lake outburst flood. A uh, study was published where 90 million people across country countries live in uh, this basin against the glacial lakes. In mountains, hazards often occur in cascading fashion. That means, firstly, it will be a heavy rainfall then this heavy rainfall is going to trigger a landslide which may in turn cause what glacial lake outburst. So this is the sequence in which the event is happening. Now for this what they are saying is that the magnitude of the tidality that occurred in uh, the south lunar glacial lake Insect is still unholding. Uh, the NDMA has led a multi agency preparatory mission of uh, to the high altitude Ronang and uh, Shakocho Glacial Lakes and installed solar powered automated camera monitoring equipment which transmitted weather data to 50 times a day. Now, while the equipment at uh, South Lono ceased transmission four days later and could not be revived. Um, the expedition was successful in identifying locations to install sensors from end to end early warning system. While the exact combination of causes of the event is yet to be ascertained, monitoring equipment had reported more than normal temperature of zero to five degrees Celsius in the four days uh, that data was received. Now, the key figures in the process chain of the disaster was collapse of huge mass of rock moraines from the northwestern bank of the lake. Which is access to more than quarter million cubic meters in volume and displays the significant volume of wetter water, widening river mouth, etc. So, the Himalayan region is susceptible to a range of hydro meteorological tectonic plate, humor induced mountain uh, hazards. Each of them requires an extensive set of monitoring, mitigation, early warning strategies. The enormity of the challenge is seen in your uh, NRSC. Glacial Lake Atlas of 2020. Three major river basins, Indus, Ganga, and Brahmaputra, are host to 28,000 glacial lakes greater than this hectare in India. Of these, 27% are in India, in six states and union territories. 
Now, many geotechnical solutions for mitigation of uh, glacial lake outburst dust have been tried globally, including excavating channels for regulating discharge, drainage, building pipes, pumps, railway construction, and setting up small catchment dams to cut down the speed of the outflow. Uh, now, this will help in what? Mitigating the challenges such as inaccessibility, impossibility in transporting, retaining, excavation improvements, strong winds, difficulties in sourcing, power, and connectivity. Other than this, what they said was that the most significant risk of such a disaster is to downstream build communities and authorities. They stand to suffer serious damage, damage of what life, property, and life people. Uh, what have uh, the uh, you know people's perspective shown? That the downstream are mostly unaware of the risk, and this poses what a sudden glacial meet that is cascading hazards, risk from glacial meeting, uh, melting, slope shifting, landslides, intense precipitation, uh, heat waves, etc. Now, what are the multidisciplinary efforts? Uh, the CWC, that is the Center Water Commission, is conducting hydrodynamic assessment. Which will lead to what high risk lakes mapping water flow. The NDMA guidelines show that provide state for technical overview of the that risk donation. A comprehensive GLOS risk mitigation plan is the final stage approval and will include installation of monitoring end to end early warning systems. Uh, all governments, scientific institutions need to come together to integrate resources and capacities in. Disaster risk reduction. While appropriate synergies have been created, increased focus on prevention mitigation will reduce what loss, damage, and bring stability to the lives of the health communities. Okay, so this was uh, with respect to your damage that was done or the disaster in the areas of system. By the discarnable flow. So, how come a uh, normal rainfall in the process leads to GLOF, that is your glacial lake outburst? Thank <laughs> you.